What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for August 15th, 2022. Star Citizen is still patching 3.17 in the PTU with no release in sight for 3.18. A new UI system popped up, and it looks insane, but how does it work? And CIG devs communicating with the community fails again. But why? All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all the official Star Citizen news each week, put it into one video, and throw some of my opinions in there. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Salty Mike, every day but Monday so I can get this video out to you guys. And I do have a second channel, Salty Mike 2. Make sure you head over there and subscribe. I've been doing some changes there and a lot of positivity around that. So we got a lot to get through this week. Let's start out with some of the patch updates. So this week we saw two patches only on the PTU with some things being hotfixed to live in an attempt to resolve a number of issues around the live patch, but specifically Siege Vorsen. 3.17.2W featured small audio pass on the snake pit track, more polish to the combat assist beacons. We should basically be seeing much more of them in the PTU. And then for bug fixes, it was just a number of minor fixes, which continued to work on the party launch being the one that sticks out to me. Them working on that party launch thing is a big deal. Siege, uh, they made a ton of changes and fixes to Siege. The one thing that I want to point out is that they wanted to put guards at the Solanke platform, hopefully preventing players from griefing the event too easily. Uh, three 3.17.2x. This was a very small patch. It was a pot potential fix for elevators being really problematic, basically. And I also think this is an appropriate time to point out that we are now in mid-August. CIG can never remotely hit a date that they mention, and it's starting to get very frustrating. I really advocated for the communication and the way they uh, kind of laid things out to us in that letter for the chairman. It's now been two months since that letter for the chairman where they stated mid-June to end of June uh, for a 3.18 release. Obviously, thing ha things happen, but with zero communication on what happened and what is happening, it just isn't good. This has been the theme for years, guys. Just communicate what's going on. When you miss a date, on that date, you should probably be like, hey, we're still working on it. We had an issue with this. We had an issue with that. And then we would all just go, okay. I mean, that's how I would imagine it would work, but maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. And quickly becoming a new trend, the Squadron 42 monthly report. Uh, we have to go over these things now because almost the entire company is working on Squadron 42, which will eventually slowly drip content to the PU, we hope, although none of that has happened yet. Hopefully we'll see some of that in 3.18. We're gonna start out with animation where we see zero G movement mentioned. This has been something that has been kicked down the line on the PU roadmap for years. So it being actively work on, worked on is a thing. I mean, it's not that important of a thing to me personally, but it's just showing that progress is actually happening, hopefully. Uh, vehicle features, MFD work is happening that really need improving. I, I'm not a fan of the way uh, MFDs communicate information to us currently. More importantly, the mysterious quantum boost was mentioned again and still don't really know what that is. Missiles got another complete rework. Missiles have not been functioning properly since their inception. Uh, and I wonder how many complete reworks we're going to have to go through until they get it right. Uh, but then the juicy stuff. And here will apply to something that we discuss later. And it's the highlighting the work they're doing on combat speeds and the flight model, essentially, in general. And they mentioned something I've never heard before, master modes. I'm not sure what those are. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think they are. But I don't think they mean like missile mode and mining mode. This seems like something else. It's probably SCM, Cruise, and Quantum. That would be my guess. Um, but yeah, they're trying to get happy with combat speeds without using boost first. And then I assume we're going to hear about the combat speed tests with boost within the next few weeks, months, whatever. And then lastly, for the monthly report, VFX, a quick mention of rigid body destruction, which will allow for the full salvage mechanics of the Reclaimer. 
and its munching mechanic. This was obviously just a quick look at the Star Citizen focused stuff on the Squadron 42 roadmap. If you are coming to Star Citizen looking for the next Wing Commander or something like that, that is what Squadron 42 is supposed to be. So if you're really interested in that stuff, the full report will be linked in the description below. And this week we got both an ISC and an SCL with the ISC being an all sprint report episode, except it's all spaceship sprint report episode because ship showdown is coming, I think today actually. And they went over the Corsair first and it was just an entire look at the thing. They went over the exterior, the interior and the landing gear much more in depth than we are gonna go on in this show. So as always, link will be in the description. They also went over the Argo SRV and they did a shorter but a similar look at the ship because it's also in the gray box phase. The Bandit Merchantman is really looking good because they finally showed us images that aren't distorted. And then the Salvage UI is the first thing that I want to dive a little deeper into. And they showed a Shields Up icon in the widget section. And the reason I just want to point this out, I think it's obvious, but to salvage a ship, the shields cannot be up, I would guess. Uh, there's also a Cutter icon, which tells me something when we look into the Gimbal update that they talked about where during that update they were talking about weapons and turrets and things but as the turret moved around which was the salvage turret it highlighted different areas of the ship i wonder if we can cut up the ship into different pieces then for that gimbal update it is basically changing the way weapons will work if they go with this system. Uh, essentially, the larger the weapon that you place on the gimbal now, the gimbal will move slower and be harder to manage. Completely new, completely different, and the fact that they're willing to show it to us tells me that they're willing to go with it. And that scares me. I don't think that we need to completely rework the weapon systems, but they do, and here we are. This is what it's like to play a game in the alpha state that we are in, I guess, because I would really like them to see, to see them stick with something and just go with it. But I guess they think that this is gonna be a better idea. It probably will be. I kind of have faith in them, but at the same time, it can be very frustrating to get used to one system and then have it change completely, which I'm sure this system will have its own flaws, right? Nothing is going to be perfect, but it seems like they keep trying to find the perfect scenario. Then the resource management system. This is a very minor update for now. It's just putting little terminals and relays inside the Aegis Hammerhead. But this is what will eventually be the thing that leads to multi-crew feeling like you're managing a ship, right? It's multi-crew from the standpoint of being a crew on a ship and not just going to different stations and stuff. It's extremely far off, it feels like, but a cool update nonetheless. And then the new UIs. Uh, these are pretty wild. A lot of debate went around the last one in particular. It was very polarizing because um, people obviously think that it looks cool, but then at the same time, having to move your head around the the menu is a little bit jarring, but I think the issue here is that the video is jarring. And I wish we got a much more smooth look at this thing because whoever recorded this was just like w wiggling their mouse around like crazy and it didn't really look that great. And the only issue that I really have here is it seems like they're putting form over function yet again. And I'm hoping that this does look very modular, like you're gonna be able to just press a button and then get a huge cargo menu, right? And you do see cargo at the bottom right of one of the menus at, or like one of the quickly panned around head movement things. So I imagine that there is some functionality going into this, but the polarized people are, I don't think that they're necessarily wrong. Do you really wanna to have to move your head around to see the whole menu or should it just kind of be on the screen, right? But that's CIG things, I guess. Uh, SCL. I'm not really going to take a look at this because it's not really a game update. It's more game developer stuff, an inside look into game development, and it's them making a buggy track in Star Citizen. If you guys are into that, link will be in the description.
For other updates, we'll start out with the sneak peek. Uh, the Volt laser is, or the pistol, I guess. They're going to have a bunch of different weapons from the Volt company. I think it's similar to the ASCAV rifle, but in some way, I'm sure it'll have its differences. And then Bar Citizen, I guess the World Tour, they called it. We're not getting CitizenCon this year, essentially, which is where everybody in the world goes to one place and hangs out with each other and the Star Citizen devs. This time, I think CIG went, hey, since we're not doing that, maybe it would be really nice to send out a few devs to a few Bar Citizens around the world and have little satellite citizen cons essentially and i think that's kind of cool i'm looking forward to the one in florida and it just kind of beats having to take a flight out to los angeles of all places just to kind of meet people from the community and i'm not really like a con person either so um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Lore Post is all about the Bremen Beltway, which seems like a smuggling trail for anti-Messer people back in the day. If you know what Messer is, then you know what this means. Uh, I know Messer was like a, an evil ruler or something. And um, these were the people that kind of helped overthrow him. Foundation Festival winners, they posted the winners uh, for the guide system thing, which was cool. And then Yogi, Yogi, Yogi. So Yogi went on Spectrum as he does and kind of stirred up the pot a little bit. Someone asked, Asked where the variations of components are. Uh, they're gone and it seemed like they should have come back a lot sooner and they didn't. He stated why. And we talk about, talked about it in the monthly report here where they're really focused on this master mode thing and the ship combat speeds and all this stuff. And they haven't even gone into ship combat speeds with boost yet, right? That's how slowly they're working on this thing. And I understand if you're upset about the pacing of things because in that video update they did, I believe it was on ISC, the pacing seemed like it was going to be a lot quicker than it is now, but the idea of him mentioning Squadron 42, I think, became the issue because people think that it's going to Squadron 42 first and then coming to us. Both games share the same code base. I believe, I truly believe that the ship speed stuff will be coming to both games at the same time. And we'll just see it when it's ready. It's cl clearly not ready if they haven't even tried it with boost yet, right? But uh, it's it's the way they communicate that just isn't great when it when they mention kind of and and uh, even allow us to assume the pace of things, but it is what it is and I don't think that this was as big of a deal, but I do understand why people are a little bit frustrated by the fact that well Flight combat has stagnated. It was a really good start, but they never finished. And they didn't even work towards anything. I think the only thing that Squadron 42 may have an effect on is that instead of small iterative updates every single patch to the flight model, it is we're throwing everything in at one time because we need to move forward on squadron. So the focus needs to be, how are the ships going to fly? How are the weapons going to work? Let's get all of that figured out right now. A big macro view of the flight system. And then you can go into the nitty gritty stuff because that's needed much later, right? I think that's the right way of doing things, especially if you're trying to get Squadron 42 out the door, which we all want that to happen. And that'll do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Last week's video did super well. And I, yeah, just keep going. Keep hitting that like button. Keep leaving comments. Share the video with anybody who you think could use some Star Citizen news each week. And I'll see you guys all next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well, guys. Another fantastic outro. Yep. I see you guys in the comments.